Psalm 140 verse 13 says, Surely the upright shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. How often do we give thanks to God's name? When we're in lack, we tend to give thanks profusely after we've been granted access again to the things we couldn't have. For example, it doesn't happen very often where I live, but sometimes my family loses electricity because of severe weather. Utilities feel like luxuries after the services have been restored, and I tend to thank God for electricity and water every time I turn on a light switch or use the water at the sink. This forwardness tapers off after a while, and it shouldn't. Our health is another thing that we tend to take for granted until it's compromised. We need to thank God for that too, on a regular basis. I remember when I saw my doctor at church. She noticed a yellow tint on my skin and in the whites of my eyes. She mentioned something about getting my liver function tested, but I didn't pay any much attention to it. I downplayed my condition, saying that it was probably the result of my ancestry. Maybe people of my same background had yellowish skin and eyes. I brushed off her comment, thinking it was simply an off-the-cuff remark. Sometimes God speaks to us softly through the words of a friend, and we ignore his gentle prodding. If we focus our attention on other things for too long, God has to yell at us to get our attention. I developed a cough sometime after that first encounter with my doctor. I went to see her at the clinic and had some blood work done in hopes that I could get an antibiotic. I received an urgent phone call later that night saying that I had to go to the hospital immediately for a blood transfusion. If this was a joke, I didn't think it was a very funny one. At first, I thought that they had the wrong phone number or that they were calling about my husband or one of my children. No, they were calling for me and the situation was very serious. I drove myself to the hospital thinking that this was all a big misunderstanding and that I could turn around and go home after a quick consultation. No such luck. I was admitted to the hospital immediately. A normal blood iron count was around 12. Mine was a 4. I wasn't allowed to walk anywhere. I had to be pushed in a wheelchair. I didn't understand why. When I asked, I was told that I was in danger of fainting. The doctors and nurses were appalled that I had even driven myself to the hospital. I had been in danger of passing out behind the wheel. Again, I had no clue that I was sick. I was given a transfusion that took 12 hours and 4 bags of blood. My hair was falling out. I began to dread looking at my pillow because of all the hair that I would find on it. I was scared to look in the mirror. When I did, I was horrified at my thinning hair and pale complexion. I didn't feel sick, except for a persistent cough, but I sure looked it. There was a healthy, vibrant woman on the inside of me, and she was trapped in a pale, sick-looking body. I stayed in the hospital for three days, slowly gaining strength while I battled my cough and low up blood iron count. I had been dangerously anemic. I'd been suffering from a vitamin deficiency, too. I'd been so used to my pale complexion that after the transfusion was over, I looked pink. My visitors expressed elation at the change. They said I finally had color in my cheeks. The look was foreign and unappealing to me. I had looked like a vampire for so long that it became my normal. After my hospital stay, I followed my doctor's instructions and slowly grew stronger over time. I had been very sick and hadn't known it. The incident made me more thankful to God for my health. As a society, we really tend to take things for granted. Our household utilities, our health, our financial resources, our spouses, our children. Let's dwell in God's presence more often and offer thanks to Him for everything. Life is more magical when we live like everything is a miracle. 